All right, hello, my name is Tom Shervelotti and I am the supervisor here at the Burlington State Fish Hatchery. This hatchery is owned and operated by the state government of Connecticut, uh, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, which is DEEP or DEEP. Uh, so this, as I said, this is a state hatchery, which means all of the fish that we raise here are raised with the purpose of releasing them into streams and rivers and ponds and lakes all throughout Connecticut and we call that stocking. So our whole goal is to stock fish with the intention of anglers in Connecticut catching them. So our objective is to help you catch more fish. That's more or less what we're here for um, and this is a long uh, tradition for state government. We've been raising fish. The state of Connecticut has been raising fish and in, in this particular hatchery we've been raising fish since 1923. So it's nearly 100 years old and as you can see the facility behind me this is the exact building that was here. Uh, this building was actually moved here from the town of Farmington. It was an old dance hall. So they were very um, creative back in 1923, but, um, but this particular hatchery was built at this location for the water source. We have artesian wells, which are the variety of wells where they're free flowing water, which means you don't need any electricity and you don't need any pumps. Um, and essentially what's happening is the water is flowing out of the ground into pipes and it's directed to the tanks. We get rid of some carbon dioxide gases that are in the water and we also um, add oxygen to the water using some aeration equipment. But basically the water is free flowing so we don't have to spend a lot of money in energy costs uh, to get the good quality cold water that these trout need. And at this facility we raise brook trout, brown trout, and rainbow trout. And we also raise a variety of salmon called the kokanee salmon. That's a Pacific variety of salmon and it's uh, related to the sockeye salmon. Which means in the fall when they do spawn, they spawn and die um, as opposed to the Atlantic salmon uh, that spawn and live for several more years. So welcome to the fish hatchery and we're about to take a tour. All right, so these are brook trout out here in this tank. And these are um, circular tanks constructed of concrete somewhere in the 1950s or so, and they're, they're pretty old, and we've done a lot of uh, work to, to rebuild them over the years. But when this first was built in 1923, as I mentioned, this whole area that we're seeing right now was uh, earthen ponds. And over the years, they've, they've made some of these tanks, and uh, it really does make a little bit of a difference up here. So this water is coming to these tanks right out of the wells. It's very fresh, uh, but it basically flows from tank to tank to tank. So we have seven of these tanks in a line and they're all full of brook trout. They're all pretty much identical tanks, 20 foot diameter tanks. They're probably about two feet deep. We have about 1800 to 1900 brook trout in each tank. Um, and these brook trout that we're looking at right now are probably close to five and a half to six inches long. And these particular fish are about 11 months old. We also raise uh, some fish that are, that are gonna be stocked beyond the traditional stocking season, which is typically the end of February through, um, through the whole month of May. So February, March, April, and, and May are pretty much the traditional trout stocking because the water temperatures that are going into the streams and lakes all throughout Connecticut are a good water temperature. However, the Farmington River here in Connecticut maintains a good water temperature because of the way it's managed. Um, and so we stock fish. Uh, we call these particular, these three tanks right here that we're standing near, um, these particular tanks we call the holiday trout because we stock those trout specifically for the holidays. Independence Day, July 4th, that we just recently celebrated, and we just recently stocked about 2,000 fish, about 14 inches long, brown trout, which these are. So that's a pretty good sized fish. They're pretty, pretty chunky, nice, big, healthy, robust trout. And people take a lot of time off at the holiday seasons, in particular July 4th and Labor Day to fish the Farmington River. And the next time these fish will be stocked, these particular fish, all three of these tanks will be emptied out and the remainder of these fish will be stocked for the Labor Day holiday. And uh, so that's why we call these the holiday fish. This is a raceway. So these raceways are long and rectangular. They're, these particular raceways are about, um, oh, probably about four feet wide. Uh, each section is about 50 feet long. There's three different sections here and it flows in a series. So the water flows in at the top, flows through run, one raceway, all through those fish down to the next one and the next one. And it gets aerated in between. So the oxygen gets a little bit of a boost in between because the fish consume it. 
kind of like we would consume oxygen if we were in an enclosed room. So these particular fish are used to this type of environment because it mimics a natural stream. Uh, most fish hatcheries in the early days when they were built all throughout the early uh, 1900s and all the way up even to today, it's a design that's still used today, but the raceway design is, is commonly used. The only drawback to it is, is that the water does, uh, the water quality does get worse as it goes down the line uh, because of the fact that it's just flowing through fish and more fish and more fish. A couple times a week they have to get manually cleaned, so people have to put on waders, which are the big tall boots, and they have to get in there with brooms and brush down the fish waste to get rid of the waste to keep a good clean environment for these particular trout. Another program that we have at the Burlington Fish Hatchery, and, and we're actually pretty well known for it, uh, is the Farmington River Survivor Program. It's been going on for quite a few years now, and um, in a nutshell, what that program is, is we collect broodstock, which are older trout, from directly from the Farmington River once a year around the end of August or early September, and we do that by field biologists and other members of the fisheries division and some people from the hatchery program we all gather together we put on our waders and the biologists that do this type of field work every day direct us and they basically take um, a generator and a canoe a couple of them and they take um, electroshocking equipment which stuns the fish temporarily and the fish loses its equilibrium a little bit and kind of rolls over and you can see the white of their belly and then you net them up and if it doesn't harm the fish or the people as long as we're wearing the proper safety clothing and it doesn't harm us or the fish and we're able to gather those fish up and put them in a cage and we sort through them and we collect the fish that we think are in the ages of two to three hopefully three years old we're looking for about a three-year-old uh, brown trout and what the idea is is instead of um, the other program that I, that I explained where the Quinnebog Hatchery raises our brood stock for us and then we get the babies from them and then we grow them for another, basically almost another year here. Uh, but basically this program is we're collecting our own brood stock from the wild so that we know that the particular genetics that we're going to be using with the, from the eggs, we know that they have the survivability to withstand the environmental conditions that the Farmington River has to throw at them. So you know beyond the shadow of a doubt if the parents survive there, then their young, their progeny can also survive there. So that's why it's called the Farmington River Survivor Program. In a nutshell, it works like this. We collect the broodstock, as I mentioned, and in the hatch house, the building, that big hatchery building, which we'll see, we'll basically raise the egg, we, we incubate the eggs in there, and then we raise the babies all throughout the summer. We'll raise the babies from all through the stages of sac fry to to uh, fry, little fry, and then fingerlings. And then eventually they come out here to these tanks. And these three tanks that we're standing near right now, they're specifically designated year after year for the Farmington River Survivor Program. So only those fish come in here. And essentially the program works like this. Um, we, we raise the uh, fish inside till they're about, till about September. So they're probably, um, you know, pretty close to nine months old or so. And then they come out here to these tanks and they're raised in these tanks all throughout the winter, you know, the remainder of the fall, the winter. And then in the spring, some of them get stocked as yearlings. So they're probably close to eight inches long. Some of them get stocked into the Farmington River and even the Housatonic River, uh, which these particular fish do quite well there. And they get stocked there as yearlings. And then some of them remain behind, such as the fish that are here right now, for the uh, almost like the holiday fish to get bigger for another growing season. So those fish stayed behind from spring and they're still here today and now these fish are upwards of 12 to 14 inches long and then in the fall some of these are going to get stocked and then yet yeah, some will stay for another rest of the fall and into and for next spring and then those fish are going to be the big Farmington River survivor hopefully become our brood stock when they live in the river for a couple more years. So those fish, some of these fish will end up being 16 to 17 inches long and well over um, all, almost two pounds a piece.
So we're standing in front of uh, one of the original dirt bottom ponds, we call these earthen ponds, uh, that has been here since the hatchery started. This particular pond, we have um, photo evidence of, of a guy giving tours here and there was cars in the background that were from like the 1930s. So this particular pond has been here for a very long time. Uh, we've done a little bit of work to improve the banks here and there, but essentially it's still the original same old pond. So we've seen so far several different methods that we raise fish in, rectangular shaped tanks, circular tanks, uh, and we also have these dirt bottom ponds. The reason this particular pond um, is important to us here, they do have their fair share of difficulties dealing with. They're hard to get out. You have to use a very large net and waders and it takes a lot more people to get these fish out of here than it would take out of a concrete tank. Um, takes a lot of work. There's a lot of aquatic weeds, uh, which you guys might be known as seaweed. There's a lot of aquatic vegetation that grows that you have to control. Uh, there's birds that can get the fish or animals. Uh, so they're a little more challenging, but the ultimate result is the, some big, beautiful fish that come out of here. And the fish are very, very beautiful looking and heavy bodied fish when they come out of this pond. Okay, so now we're in the hatch house. Uh, this is the main hatchery building at the Burlington Hatchery. And in here we do a variety of, uh, of programs. We do the Farmington River Survivor Program for the, for the eggs and also the fry and the fingerlings. And those fish come in here. As I said, we capture the adults uh, in the Farmington River and we actually bring them in here and we bring them back to the hatchery and we put them in two tanks and we isolate that area with a wall of plastic uh, fencing so that the germs don't get into the rest of the building. Um, and they're completely isolated. And then in, in due time, all throughout October and into early November, those fish are ready to go and we squeeze the eggs out of them. And it's called strip spawning where we basically squeeze the eggs. And you can see some other video footage of that that I did last fall. Uh, basically we're squeezing the eggs out and then you squeeze the males and you get the milk and then you fertilize them. And then you put them in incubators and basically about uh, 50 to 60 days later, you get hatched uh, sack fry. And then they stay in the metal troughs that you'll see on the video footage from earlier uh, last winter. Uh, you basically see they stay in those troughs for up to about a month uh, when they're really little. And the reason that they're in a smaller tank than even these tanks, so that you can get good uh, quality care for them. And, and you know, really, they, they don't want to be in a big, they'd get lost if they're in this big deep tank right here. And then you can brush all the corners out and, and really take the care to clean them all. So we clean them twice a day. And at that size of fish, when they're, when they're um, really small, like a month old, they're fed every hour. So that's a real crucial part. And we take really great care to keep the germs from the larger fish that are outdoors uh, to bring them inside, because it's a similar concept that if you were to go visit a, a human being, a baby, infant at the hospital, if you as an adult have a cold, it pro if you have a healthy immune system, it's not gonna kill you. But if you brought that cold to a brand new newborn infant, it could cause great harm to that baby. Um, so that's kind of what we do here. We disinfect our equipment, our clothing, and we use different equipment for in here than we do for outside. These particular fish are older now, but they are continually fed throughout the day by that uh, feeder, which is a belt feeder. And the feeder is the one with the blue bucket on top of it, and it has the green cover there. And it's a very basic design. It has a clock mechanism, which makes it go. And when you open that feeder up, there's a belt that you pull back, kind of like a conveyor belt. And the clock mechanisms makes that belt go a little bit at a time. And you put the feed right on there, and about every 15, 20 minutes, a little bit of food gets spilled into the tank and the fish can eat throughout the day. So baby young fish uh, need to eat a lot more often. The fish outside that we've been seeing throughout the tour, those fish, um, they, they can eat you know, once or twice a day and be fine. Their entire daily ration can be eaten all at once at that size. Uh, but just like, again, just like a, a human, you know, all of the moms out there know this very, very well. You know, human babies don't just eat once a day. I'm sure they wish they did, but they don't. They eat all the time. They're up all night feeding. And, um, you know, it's, it's very similar that these, these fish have a high metabolism and need to eat as well.